Welcome to Two Old Geeks Talking. This is our post-apocalyptic episodes. I'm Rob. I'm Trace. And uh, today we're going to talk about Mad Max films. And uh, we'll concentrate on uh, other movies in part two. But in part one, we're going to talk about what I consider to be the best post-apocalyptic movies. Mad Max. Mad Max. Right. Mad Max. So, uh, uh, now, if you were going to advise somebody which order to watch the Mad Max movies, uh, what order would you put them in? Uh, in the order in which they came out. Mm, see, I would. I would have them watch them. Well, the order they come out is Mad Max, Road Warrior, uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, Mad Max Fury Road. And so how I would have watched them is how we watched them. We watched Road Warrior, and then we went back and watched Mad Max, and then we watched Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. And uh, so how we're going to talk about them, we'll talk about them. If you want, we'll talk about them in order. Nah, it don't matter. So, so, so the first one, Mad Max. What, what you, what you want to say about Mad Max, brother? Okay, so what I liked is it, I don't know how much history y'all know on Miller and his thought process is he really endelved in all of his characters and gave them all backstories, even down to the, the guy running the garage. And he really, really, really did some research on how the world would turn if the economic things turned and, and how two, two rivaling countries fought over gas and started burning each other's oil rigs and stuff and how it would affect the world so it's not like so that that's the the post-apocalyptic part but it also was one man's story on how he dealt with it and how it affected his world that's that's where i yeah i mean uh, what i like about the first movie first of all it was like shot on with three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and it made 10 million now think about that that's like what nine times no it's like uh, uh, a lot more money than you spend on it <laughs> right <laughs> anyway one of the most profitable movies made period at the time three hundred fifty thousand dollar investment and you get 10 million back and uh, it just goes to show you don't have to spend a lot of money on a movie to make it good fantastic car chase movie but first right. of all it's not in Mad Max the original one come out in uh, I think in uh, uh, America come out in 1980 and Australia come out in 1979 but uh, uh, it was like a, a real good car chase movie I mean it had a lot of action in it but as far as post-apocalyptic what you think things were just starting to turn bad in this movie so they're starting to have fuel shortages and they're starting to have roving gangs around and so uh, that's what the movie's based on uh, I saw Road Warrior first, so when I went back to see this one, I was expecting to see more Road Warrior. The fact is, it was a very different movie. But uh, George Miller originally was studying to be a surgeon, and uh, uh, he took a lot of his uh, medical knowledge and put it in there. But the stunts in this movie, oh, freaking awesome. Now, this is a time where we didn't have CGI. So if you want a, a motorcycle to hit a guardrail and a guy to flip, over end and land in a creek. That was a real guy. Then you got to ask an Australian stuntman <coughs> to do that, and they're like, "Hey, mate, hold my beer. I'll do it." Yeah, it was rumored <laughs> that the man had died, but he didn't. He, yeah. I think he suffered several broken bones. Yeah, yeah, but... I think he broke his pelvis or something yeah. like that. But the thing is, is that uh, even the camera work, you had guys on motorcycles, another guy hanging on the back with a full-size camera, leaning over to film these shots as they're going down the road. They wouldn't even allow you to do that nowadays. So there was there was one scene where they laid down a couple of motorcycles and a motorcycle come back and hit a guy in the back right? of the head. Yeah. And I mean you're thinking, yeah, he, he, he's, he's dead. He's dead. He's, he's dead. dead. And uh, uh, but the but the movie's the movie's fantastic. The house that uh, Mel Gibson had in this movie, you can actually rent it out today. It's on the coast. Oh yeah. And you can actually rent it out today, and huh. uh, like a little bed and breakfast type thing. That's pretty awesome. But uh, Mel Gibson was 21 when he made this, and uh, uh, it just shows you and what a fantastic, you can already tell what a fantastic actor he is, and uh, uh, it really shows through, I mean, because 21 years old, I mean, 
I don't care how long you've been studying the craft, you've only got 21 years of life to draw on. He did a, he did a fantastic right. job. If you haven't seen this, you should see it. Rob says you should see it first. I say you should see it second, but definitely see it because <laughs> it's a, it's a kick button movie. So the next Mad Max is The Road Warrior. What, right. you, what you wanna say about that, brother? Mm, let me see that. So, <laughs> I love the way it, I don't know how many years later from the original it was supposed to have taken place. What is it, like three or four years? Yeah, yeah. And you can see how much the world had changed and how much it had progressed into uh, rival gangs, uh, factions forming, a lot of like people do on the show Grateful Dead. Yeah. You know, yeah. you've got a group of people. In walking just, Dead. Or Walking Dead, yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking Dead. And uh, they're just trying to survive. And, you know, <laughs> who don't love Humongous? <laughs> oh man, he's great. He's fantastic. I mean, I, I mean, to me, this is like uh, you know, there was a lot of rated R movies we couldn't see, and so when VH, when we reached a certain age and we could see them, and VHS was available, you know, we we nose dived in as many rated R movies as we could. Uh, Road Warrior was one of them. This was actually called Mad Max Two, everywhere except for America. But since Mad Max wouldn't the first Mad Max wouldn't really popular that popular in America, it, it had a uh, they didn't have the original Australian soundtrack from the first movie. They had it dubbed over with Americans because they thought Americans couldn't understand Australian. And if you ever do watch the first one, make sure you watch it with the original uh, Australian soundtrack. So a lot of people didn't even know about Mad Max when Road Warrior came out. Now since then, if you buy this today, it's a Mad Max Two Road Warrior. But when it came out of theaters, it was just Road Warrior. And uh, uh, just the guy wandering through the wasteland comes across uh, a group of people that uh, uh, are refining oil and you know gasoline's everything. And uh, so he helps them against a bunch of uh, wasteland bandits. So yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, right. uh, yeah. In every movie, there's always one prop or one thing, you know, like Blade Runner, I love his gun. But in this movie, it was the Interceptor. Oh, who man. Did, who did, and the fact that they brought it back from the old original movie, mm -hmm. that was just like, mm, I yeah, love that. It was that. a Ford Falcon. And uh, uh, they only made like 300, 300 of the Australian editions. A steering wheel on the uh, other side. I want to say the wrong side because of them. That's the, the right side. Right. But uh, uh, they're real sought after after collectors. Love to have one. If you guys have spent hundreds, you know, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars on getting one, shipping it over to America and restoring it, and uh, I'd love to take a ride in one or just to gaze at one at some point. If I'm not mistaken, the original, when they done the first movie, it said it just sits in a garage, or not a garage, but a junkyard, and then eventually. When the second movie came out, they pulled it back out, they modified it, put the two big tanks in the back to hold fuel, and then it ended up getting bought, and it resides, I think, it might still reside in Florida. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I would love to see one fixed up, let alone the original one. Right. That was a, that was a great movie. You had uh, Bruce, I want to say uh, Spence, who played the real skinny helicopter pilot. Right, right, right. I mean, this guy's so skinny, he could turn sideways and turn invisible. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's done a lot great. of good acting. And, it, and there's like, I think I think Mel Gibson had like nine lines of dialogue or something to that effect in the movie uh, because it's an action movie. Right. You read a book and it tells a story with words, but there's something you can do with cinema you can't do with a book, and that is you can tell uh, a story without words. And that's what George Miller's a master of. And so, uh, even without a lot of dialogue in a movie, it's action-packed, and, and you definitely, you definitely should see this. So then, the next one <laughs> was Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Okay, what was your thoughts on that? Okay, nope. I'm just gonna say <laughs> Tina Turner. <laughs> I know she was in her 50s at the time, but for a young man seeing a woman in chainmail, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that. So yeah, yeah. Now, Tina's now great. the uh, what got me about the whole storyline is I, at first I was confused because the children that were waiting for uh, 
Major, what was his name? Uh, Captain some another. Cap, uh, <coughs> Captain Young, was it Captain Yeah, yeah, Young? yeah, I think so, yeah, or Major Young. Major Young. <coughs> uh, when they were doing the remembering, they were remembering an apocalyptic, uh, an actual nuclear war. So that means somewhere between the second one and the third one, a nuclear war happened after the fact, in between those two movies. Right, right. And that, but when I was watching it, it was kind of confusing for me because I knew that wasn't the fact with the first two movies. So that's, I love the movie. I love the whole barter town, the way they had oh, that fixed great. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the story kind of threw me off at that time. Now, now I've looked into it and got myself more familiarized with it. I enjoyed it. I think they, they went the PG-13 route and they thought to themselves that you know they would be able to get more people into the movie theaters if they made it PG-13. The fact is is that some movies shouldn't be PG-13. Mad Max would be one of those. And uh, so everything was toned down a bit. Uh, I thought Mel Gibson did a fantastic job. Bruce Spence was in this one again playing another character which is confusing because he looked exactly like he did right. in the second movie. So I'm See, not really sure I, why I, they did that. For a while, that. I thought it was the same Yeah, character. yeah, 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 yeah. So that was kind of screwed up. Uh, but Tina Turner did fantastic. Thunderdome. Two <laughs> men enter. One, one man, man leave. leave. Two men enter. And one man leave. that leaves. has been used a hundred times. Yeah, over. yeah, yeah. That is, uh, you've seen in Rick and Morty. You've seen a lot of things. So so uh, that was awesome. And Master Blaster. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to segue off this to something else. Uh, you like rent you like rent fairs? I like oh, rent yeah. fairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they have a, uh, a post-apocalyptic rent fair. I guess you, it's called Wasteland Weekend. Right, I've seen. But they actually have a Thunderdome they build. Oh, are you, you get serious? in there and they have the straps and you beat the <laughs> crap out of each other with uh, big foam weapons so nobody loses teeth or lives. But. Uh, uh, I would love to go there and fight yeah. you in that. That would be awesome. It'd <laughs> yeah. be awesome until I kicked your butt. Yeah, yeah, well, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. But, uh, uh, yeah, I would love to, if, if look, definitely look up Wasteland Weekend. If you're into post-apocalyptic stuff, it's in California. It's out in the desert. God bought a section of land, has it every year. And uh, uh, people bring, you can't come into the thing unless you're in costume. And they have a compound that you can't bring your vehicle into unless it is post-apocalyptic. And so you see a lot of those interceptors like mm -hmm. we talked oh, about yeah. down there. And so it's really based on like Mad Max. You'll see some guys wearing Fallout stuff and you'll see some guys wearing some Borderland stuff, but mainly it's Mad Max fans getting out in the desert and doing their own, uh, doing their own thing. But uh, I like this, the, when, he, when Mel Gibson met the kids, they kind of threw the tone of the movie a little off. I really don't see him as a father figure. I see him in more as a lone gunman type person, so uh, that was a little odd. But all in all, it was good. I well, think see, it would have been thing, better if it was The thing a about art. that is, he was supposed to have become a father figure, but he lost. Spoilers: He lost his wife and child in the very first movie. True. So it's kind of like he was asked to do something that he kind of turned his back on, or pretty much had to turn his back on. So I kind of got that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I like it. I mean, it's definitely still a good movie, but I still like uh, Road Warrior best. So then they decided they were going to not really reboot. They're going to continue uh, the Mad Max storyline. Uh, this is supposed to happen before Thunderdome. Is uh, that right? Yeah, yeah. and uh, George Miller, the important thing is George Miller is doing it. And George Miller was 70 years old when he did Mad Max Fury Road. Empire Magazine just named the number one movie of the 21st century. Now we're 20 years into the 21st century, and the movie they named number one, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Now see, I, thought, I mean Mad Max Fury Road. I thought this was supposed to be, uh, originally was supposed to be Mad Max's, Mel Gibson's big exit to the whole thing. They were going to try to kill him all. And because of certain things, they ended up going with a different actor. So, yeah. what do you think about this? <sighs> love the vehicles, love the style of the vehicles, love the way they done up the vehicles. Was thrown off 
from the very minute that it came on because he talks about, I was a father, I was a cop. And I know, I'm hearing in my head, these are lines that Mel Gibson are supposed to be saying, not some guy that was only born 30 years ago before all of this even took place. There were no cops. Cops stopped existing 30 years before that. Wow. So the whole thing kind of threw me off from the get-go. Love the movie. Yes. Love the looks. Mm -hmm. I thought the movie was great. I really enjoyed the movie. I give it a 9 on a scale of 1 to 10. The only way it could have been a 10 is Mel Gibson. Oh, if he was uh, Mad Max, he could. Right. He's got that big duck beard. Now, yeah. I mean, Mel Gibson's cool, and I mean, he's forgot more about acting than most people. You probably have heard of this, and you can look it up on the internet. But uh, his ex-wife, or I guess it was his wife at the time, on the process <laughs> of being his ex-wife, taped him saying a bunch of uh, racist and sexist things, and yeah. He said some stuff he shouldn't have said, but you know what? We've all said things we shouldn't say. We've all done things we shouldn't do. Uh, we just didn't have somebody videotape it and show it to the world. Right. So, I mean, as far as me and Mel Gibson, well, you know, him, me finding out he's imperfect, it, it really wasn't a big surprise. We all are. But the fact is, is Mel Gibson's a fantastic actor, and he's a great director. And he made and that character what it was. He made the character. And you can separate, and I can separate uh, the man from the actor. Right. So his personal life is his personal life. Don't have anything, anything to do with me or you. And uh, his professional work is his professional work. Uh, they should have had Tom Hardy. He did good, but uh, he he was just a scab. I mean, it's he. There's no way he could have done as good as Mel Gibson. George would have liked to have Mel, I'm sure, but there's no way he's going to sell a, a, a movie theater on that with all that crap swirling around. So, uh, uh, but the movie's great. Hardly any dialogue. There again, it's a story told with uh, uh, okay. pictures. Did you know, and I didn't know this until just the other day, that the main villain in this movie mm. yeah. also was played by the same actor that yeah. played the main villain in the first movie. What was his name? I wouldn't say James. Toe Crusher or Thumb Toe Crusher? Cutter in the Toe first cutter, movie. I cutter. think the actor's name is like James <coughs> Reeves Davis or something like and, that. I probably got that wrong, but. And the fact that they've got him in there as the main villain. Yeah. It's just awesome. Awesome as all get out. And then yeah. the fact that they don't have Mel Gibson is just as unawesome right, as the exact right, opposite. Right, right, right. What did you think about uh, Charlize Theron, her character, Furioso? I like the character. I liked the way they wrote the character, and hopefully, Miller is supposed supposedly supposed to be working on a, like a uh, prequel of when she was younger, mm -hmm. and do more of a story with her. That's the thing. He has so much, like I said before, he has so much backstory with all those characters that nobody knows nothing about. If I had more of a backstory. About her, I think I would have enjoyed her character more, because there was no reason I didn't I couldn't figure out why she at the beginning why she was taking these girls. You know, if she was loyal to him, why she stopped being loyal to him. Right. I, I enjoyed the movie, and and uh, uh, they recently uh, Sci-Fi Wire uh, somebody did an article named Jenny, and she said that this movie was actually a political statement. They had to do with the dangers of toxic masculinity and, <laughs> and climate change. Well, I'm sorry, Jenny, you're wrong. What this is, is it's an action movie. You have explosions and uh, gunfights and fist fights and beautiful women and rugged men. It's called an action movie. It's not a political statement. So sorry, Jenny, you can come out of your safe place and stop hugging your emotional support animal and, and uh, you're going to be okay. All right, so... Uh, I think that's it for Mad Max. You get anything to close with? Nope, other than I, the dog. I love the dog. Yeah, and the second one? Right, yeah. did you yeah. know the, they went and got, they wanted an Australian breed dog. They mm -hmm. went and got that dog. It was supposed to be put down the day after they picked it up. And they kept it, I think the, somebody on the set ended up keeping that dog till it passed away of old age. But it never had a name, did it? It was just called the dog? I don't know. Yeah. This is, for, this is for the dog. This is for the dog. <laughs> There's actually some of his dog food that he ate. Okay, all right. All right. I'm I think done. we're. I'm done. You done? I'm done. You done?
All right, we're good. done, man. <laughs>